In this homework example, you're going to work on applications of GCF, which is greatest common factor, and LCM, which is least common multiple. So let's read the first question. Penny and Sheldon are assembling hair clips. Penny can assemble a hair clip in six minutes, and Sheldon can assemble a hair clip in nine minutes. Now we see our question. If they start making the hair clips at the same time, what is the least amount it makes amount of minutes it will take them to finish a hair clip at the same time. So that's our first question. Okay. And you can notice from the title this is going to be a greatest common factor or a least common multiple. But rather than thinking of what process we should apply, let's just think about this problem and make sense of it and then we'll see how it connects to either greatest common factor or least common multiple. So I'm going to start with Penny assembling hair clips. Okay, so make this time for Penny and number of, I'll use HC for hair clips. Okay, so we're going to say that they started at time zero. Okay, so that's an easy number to start with. So after zero minutes, she's made zero hair clips. Okay. So we know how long it takes her to make a hair clip, so we're going to count by six minutes. So six minutes later, she's made one hair clip. Another six minutes after that, she's made two hair clips. So notice I added six plus six is 12, or six times two is 12. Another six minutes later, three hair clips. And we can continue in this manner. Manner. Five hair clips, 36 minutes, she's made six hair clips. So these are some of the corresponding times and the number of hair clips Penny has made. So let's write Sheldon's information. So time for Sheldon. So it takes him nine minutes to assemble a hair clip. So zero hair clips at zero minutes. One hair clip will be nine minutes. Two hair clips will be 18. Three will be another nine minutes, so 27 minutes in total to make three. And we can continue in this manner. Four will be 36. Nine times five is 45. Nine times six is 54. So now we have some information on the time they'll be finishing hair clips and the corresponding number of hair clips. So we want the least amount of minutes it will take them to take for them to finish a hair clip at the same time. So we want to look at these are the times they're finishing hair clips. We want to see which ones correspond. Well, zero corresponds, but that's not interesting because they haven't finished any hair clips. So I'm, on, I'm going to look at Penny's numbers and compare them to Sheldon's. So 6 minutes, nope, 12, nope, 18. Yes, they both finish a hair clip at exactly 18 minutes. And there's another match as well at 36 minutes. And we could keep writing these forever, and we would continue to have corresponding values in the two columns. But in particular, what we're looking for based on the directions is the least amount of minutes it will take them. And notice that would be 18. So 18 minutes. And notice 18 is a common multiple of 6 and 19. So these are multiples of 6 and 19. 6 times 0 times 1 times 2 times 3, etc. Uh, 9 times 1, 9 times 2, 9 times 3, etc. Okay. 18 and 36 are common multiples, and then 18 we see is the first common multiple, so it's the smallest or least common multiple. Let's complete the next two questions. After this amount of minutes, how many hair clips will Penny have made? So we can see from our chart at 18 minutes, Penny has made three hair clips. And another way you can see that, well, if 18 minutes has passed, she can assemble a hair clip in 6 minutes. You could divide the 18 by 6 to see she'd make 3 hair clips. Similarly with Sheldon, 
At 18 minutes, we can see he's made two hair clips. Or we could divide the 18 minutes by 9 minutes per clip. 18 divided by 9 is 2. Now let's look at the next example. Catherine is packing bags of food at the local food pantry. She has 24 jars of tomato sauce and 18 cans of soup. If she wants each bag to have the same numbers of tomato sauce and soup, now I see the question, what is the greatest number of bags she can pack? Okay. So our given information is there's 24 jars of tomato sauce and 18 cans of soup, and she wants each bag to have the same numbers of tomato sauce and soup. So let's break th down that idea a little bit more. So that doesn't mean she wants two tomato sauce and two soup per bag that these numbers have to match up. So the tomato sauce should be evenly distributed through the bags and the soup should be evenly distributed through the bags. So there could be different amounts, but each bag has to have the same number of items as every other bag. And then the question is, what is the greatest number of bags she can pack? So let's make a chart like we did in the last situation. And we will start with the tomato sauce. So we have 24 jars of tomato sauce. And we want to think about how we can break that up into different numbers of bags. So let's make columns like we did before, but here we're going to have number of bags and then number of jars per bag. Okay. So one option okay, is to have one bag and put all 24 jars in the bag. Probably not the best option, but it is an option. If we have two bags, so I'm counting up by number of bags, two bags would be 12 jars per bag. Three bags, well, 24 divided by three, I would have eight jars per bag. Four bags, I divide the 24 into four groups, which would be six jars per bag. Five bags, well, if I divide 24 by five, I would have four per bag, but then I'd have some left over. So we want to use all of the cans of soup and tomato sauce. So that's not an option. Okay. And now notice the numbers are just going to reverse. So six bags, I would have four jars per bag. And now I'm just going to use my other information. Eight bags, three jars, 12 bags two jars or 24 bags each with one jar. Okay. And notice basically what we just did is we found all the factor pairs of 24. Okay. We also reverse the numbers in this case because the factors are representing different values, numbers of bags or number of jars per bag. Now we need to do the same process for the 18 cans of soup. So let's change colors. So I'm going to move this about right here. So we have 18 cans of soup. And we want to see the number of bags and the number of jars per bag. Okay. So again, we'll start with one. So we can have one bag and put all 18 can jars of soup in it. Sorry, this is cans of soup. We can have two bags and divide the 18 into two bags would be nine cans per bag. Three bags would be six cans per bag. Now four bags, if I divided the 18 by four, then it would be four per bag, but I'd have two cans of soup left over. So we don't want to have any left over, so four doesn't work. Five also doesn't work. That would be three cans of soup per bag, but we'd have soup left over. Okay. Now our next number is six, and notice we can reverse these values. So we could have six bags with three soups per bag, nine bags with two 
cans per bag or 18 bags with one can per bag. Okay. So now we know all the ways we can partition the jars of tomato sauce and the cans of soup, but we need to find a number of bags that matches for each of them. So I'm going to get the highlighter ready. Okay. So they each have the possibility of making one bag. So we're comparing the bags because that's what needs to match up. They each have two as a possibility. They each can have three as a possibility. Four is a possibility for the tomato sauce, but not the soup. They each can have six. And then nine and 18, none of these numbers are in both columns. So the possible number of bags that we can make that have this property are one, two, three, and six. And remember the question asked us, what is the greatest number of bags you can pack? And that would be the largest number they have in common, which is six. Okay, so notice so these were the factor pairs for these numbers, and we found the greatest factor pair, the greatest factor they both share, which was six. So this is why this is the greatest common factor problem. Okay. How many jars of tomato sauce will each bag have? So let's look at the tomato sauce. If we have six bags, which is the greatest number, there'd be four jars per bag. And notice that's dividing the 24 into six bags would give us four. And for soup, six bags would be three cans of soup per bag. Dividing the 18 cans of soup into six bags gives us three cans per bag. So we'll have another video for the next two problems, so you can click on that in MathAS.